All right, let's talk about serpentine, the most dangerous mineral on our list. Um, but actually, yes, it is quite dangerous, can be quite dangerous. The samples that I have here are pretty safe for me to interact with. Um, but most samples like these that you see here with this kind of texture, um, you may better know as asbestos. Um, and so think back to asbestos removal, mesothelioma, all of that stuff can be a problem because of serpentine. But we're not going to be talking about medical geology today. Um, but this is why it's the most dangerous mineral that we have on our list. So the first thing that I think of when I think of serpentine is that it's a hydrothermally altered mineral. So it goes through a process called serpentinization. And this can happen in a couple of diff couple different locations in the world, um, or not locations, but geologic settings. One that we talk about the most in petrology is where we have a subducting slab of um, plate. And in that we have hydrothermal alteration that happens from um, fluids that are usually heated by magma bodies. And so the first thing that I think of is um, the color that we see. Serpentine can be a bunch of different colors, but what's most common because of if we think about the rocks that are actually being altered themselves, they're usually olivine heavy, pyroxene heavy. So the colors that I think of is altered green. And we can see that here with this one very kind of green and gold toned, right? Um, oh, there's a good one. Very green right here. And then this sample, if we even just look at the top here, it's kind of this like pale green kind of color. And then this one here is more of this brownish green that we have. But so it's typical just of the rocks that are being serpentinized for them to turn out green like this. And so green, that's the first color indicator that I think of. The next thing that I look for is this kind of ribboning pattern. So this is the fibrous growth. The crystal habit of this would be fibrous. And this fibrous growth is actually what um, made serpentine such a great insulator and why it was put into so many materials because it has great material properties. Um, this is the most dangerous aspect of serpentine, but this fibrous growth habit is one of the telltale signs. But just having this habit alone is one of the first things that makes me think of serpentine, but then also having it with this serpentinized host rock like this, where it almost looks like it looks like chert, right? Like some kind of altered quartz here. We can see it really well in this sample where we don't have that fibrous material. This is really, really common of serpentine. And so what we've really just discussed is essentially crystal habits. Um, but the crystal habit of this, the dead giveaway that we're talking about serpentine here. I also have that this is a monoclinic mineral. Now, would that necessarily help you identify this knowing it's monoclinic? No, we can't see any crystal forms here, right? There's no crystal shapes to help us out. This is not what you would call a euhedral crystal. Well, this one has a lot of really nice light. But what you would also say is indicative of this is the luster. So this has a pearly to earthy luster. This kind of pearly fibrous, I mean, the reflection of this is pretty impressive. This pearly fibrous look, and then on this side, having something that's like earthy, waxy. This one almost is very waxy, right? These kind of mixed modes of luster is really common for something like serpentine. It's also moderately low density. I'm picking up this chunk just because it's like the most cohesive chunk. Moderately low density, once again, just like our tectosilicate family, even though we're in the phyllosilicates now. Um, what else do I have? So because there are so many different crystal habits of this, this fibrous material, and especially we can look at the differences here just in having the fibrous material, this one is much more altered, right? It looks fuzzy. And this one looks much more compact. And then this one looks very different altogether. 
all of these would have different hardnesses. So something like hardness, not going to be necessarily diagnostic, especially because it's so variable between samples. But the fact that it is variable between samples might be something to note, especially if you have a sample like this. Um, but in general, I stay away from hardness. Let's see, it would be between, I have on my notes, a three to a six. So some of them we should be able to scratch with a nail very easily. I would imagine this one and this one. And then some of them we would be able to scratch glass with this one. You know what, let's just give it a go. We'll see. Serpentine's a weird one, y'all. All right, so actually, I can't scratch the glass with this one, even though it's such a cohesive chunk. So let's give it a go with the nail. All right, yeah, it's pretty soft. So this one's one of those that even though it looks really hard, the soft, it's pretty darn soft. It powdered readily with this nail here. They should all be harder than a penny though. And let's see, what else do we have? Cleavage is also difficult to tell, right? Because our cleavage planes in this, because it's a fibrous mineral, we would expect it to go along the fibers. But with this one, cleavage is just, I can't see anything, right? And I think that's all that I have. So really, this fibrous texture, fibrous crystal habit, the color, um, variable hardness, the crystal system's monoclinic, but that's not going to do you much. These won't react with acid. And that's basically serpentine, the quick and dirty breakdown.